Good evening all, I'm Didi Lamba and welcome to our special report, Coronavirus Pandemic 2020 on Vision of Asia. We are coming to you from our studio located here in New York City. Hope you're all staying safe and inside. You're watching our daily South Asian news segment dedicated to raising awareness and bringing forth pertinent information, updates and advice from prominent medical professionals and elected officials here on ITV Gold. We are surely living in a time of uncertainty with thousands of cases of COVID-19 in the United States being the nation with the highest number of cases to more than 3,000 deaths in the country so far. Here is another prayer for all the families that have lost their loved ones. We are hoping for your strength and your patience. Again, it is our humble request to all our viewers of Vision of Asia to take the ultimate responsibility of ensuring your safety and safety of others around you by practicing social distancing. Do it for the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, healthcare workers, local, state and federal workers and other essential persons, including the members of media. And again, we thank all that are working tirelessly on the front line. If you have a loved one serving on the front line as a medical or healthcare professional, please reach us on events at itvgold.com and share their stories with us. We look forward to our continuous features of respected doctors and officials here on ITV Gold, bringing to you all updates and relevant information. With that, it's time to now begin the episode and take a look at our headlines, a power-packed episode with officials and doctors. Here are the headlines. Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams addresses South Asian American community on COVID-19, ITV Gold Skype. Dr. Purvi Parekh addresses coronavirus pandemic facts and advice, ITV Gold Skype. Dr. Binod Sinha on coronavirus 2020, stay, stop, save, New Jersey. ITV Gold exclusive featuring Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams right after a show break. Stay with on Vision of Asia, Voice of the Community will be right back. Welcome back, I'm Aditi Lamba and this is Vision of Asia Coronavirus Pandemic 2020 edition. Let's begin the episode taking a look at our recent conversation. First official from New York City on COVID-19, our interview via Skype with Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams who addressed South Asian Americans as well as other minorities stating that Brooklyn is there for its multi-ethnic community and will stand in solidarity against coronavirus pandemic. Borough President Adams very honestly spoke on the massive impact of COVID-19 on New York City and the current ongoings as well as appeals for PPE, personal protective equipment and the great need to ensure the safety and security of all that are on the front line from first responders to the NYPD to medical and healthcare workers. Addressing the South Asian American community, Borough President also reflected upon the role of the community in making Brooklyn a thriving borough and said that he wants to ensure that South Asians are protected and cared for in this time of need. Much insight into the current plans on combating COVID-19. Here is our segment of our conversation via Sky featuring Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams who joined us from his vehicle while he was on the road delivering donated PPE to several hospitals and facilities in Brooklyn. He's also running for mayor of New York City next year in 2021 with primaries taking place in June. Let's take a look at our conversation with him. Today we have the honor and privilege of having with us via Skype who's currently as we take him live on the show traveling uh, through the roads here in New York City. We are joined here by with us Brooklyn Borough President Mr. Eric Adams. Thank you so much for being with us here on ITV Go via Skype. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you as we move around and deal with this very serious issue of coronavirus. Yes, for sure. And thank you again so much. I know you're currently on the road and I think it's truly an exciting experience for us to have, you know, this conversation go live while you're actually on the road. If I could ask you uh, where you're headed to and how your day has been, could you give us a little insight into it, sir? Uh, it's extremely a high level of stress on many levels. And uh, think about it. Uh, New York City has never really uh, had to deal with the crisis of this magnitude. The closest we can think about was after the 9-11 attacks. But after those attacks, 9-12, we were able to rebuild. But coronavirus is something that you're not rebuilding uh, one day. Once you get the your wind knocked out of you, you don't have right. a quick recovery, this may be here for several months, and we must get the right supplies and tools uh, to our extremely stressed out 
uh, medical system here in New York City. Right, definitely. And it's right that you said that PPE, you know, the personal protective equipment has been such a huge issue. It is one of the main factors that is truly concerning healthcare professionals and elected officials such as yourself. Today, you addressed the New York City Department of Correction asking for, you know, the workers there as well as the inmates to be protected better. I just want to start this off asking you how that address was and a little bit more insight into it. Well, it's important uh, that not only the prisoners receive testing and personal protection equipment, but also the countless number of correction officers, our police officers, our firefighters, all essential employees uh, that will allow this city to continue to function through this crisis, they must be protected also. Unlike the September 11th attack, where many police officers uh, received 9-11 uh, related injuries, right. they didn't take those injuries home to their families. With coronavirus, if you are infected, you're going home and you could have long-term impacts on your families. As a former police officer, I know what that means. I know that we're starting to lose far too many people. We must right. isolate, contain, and give the proper protection equipment uh, right. to those that we have placed on the front line. So what are the demands right now, sir, if I was to ask you from uh, the Department of Correction, what are you hoping uh, to get uh, for these inmates and also the workers that are working there? We want them to have personal protection equipment. Uh, this allows the virus <clears throat> not to spread. And also it ensures that we are not putting people in harm's way. And it goes beyond the walls of our correctional facilities. It must be an immediate response from our entire city to protect those we're telling that they must go to their place of employment to keep the city running. Uh, those are tra uh, train operators, bus drivers, uh, grocery clerks, all of these people who have stated uh, they are willing to sacrifice their lives to protect us and to serve us. We must make sure they have the items they need to protect their families and protect them themselves individually. Definitely, and I truly appreciate you for bringing forward this really important topic. PPE, we are discussing this with everyone. I want to address, um, you know, the medical community here with you, sir, and also all of the healthcare workers. Again, PPP is a huge issue for them as well. We actually had a doctor come and address the fact that she hasn't had a proper mask for five days and she's reusing it because that's the only thing that she can do. And she is located in New York City. Um, you know, your address to the medical community, the professionals, what insight could you give us in terms of what is being done by the borough office right now for these, uh, you know, healthcare workers and the medical workers? Uh, it is the job of the city and state uh, yes. to get the equipment to them. Um, I am in my car right now, and I'm going to show you a picture. These wow. are boxes of masks that I just picked up and collected. I'm driving around to hospitals to deliver them to nurses and other medical staff. Uh, this is an indictment on our country on a whole that the richest country uh, on the planet, we don't have basic supplies for our healthcare employees. Uh, this is really an embarrassment for America, an embarrassment for New York State and New York City. Uh, we should be able to provide our citizens with the equipment that they needed. I should not be driving around the city giving out mm. uh, personal protection equipment to our healthcare professionals in the most affluent country on the globe, in the most affluent city. So I have to ask you, I know you have visited certain locations, you have visited emergency rooms, you're currently going and you are delivering PPEs yourself. This is absolutely amazing. Um, could you tell us a little bit more information about what is happening on the scene and how important it is for you to right now go and deliver these? A little bit insight into these doctors, these professionals and what's happening on these uh, emergency rooms that we keep on hearing about is like a war zone. Yes, it is. It's, 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 it is the war zone. It's the war zone in America. And as in any war, there's a front. Um, the New York City is the front and Brooklyn is ground zero of that front. We're the epicenter of this uh, serious issue. And as we are at war, you will not send your men and women into battle without the proper equipment to protect the country. And we're doing that now. And those of us who feel that we have an obligation and responsibility, we're going to the front line. We're on the front giving these supplies. These boxes here with me in the car, they're real. They're resources. Uh, just as any military person will be relieved when they know that bullets are coming to them so they can protect the country. When I bring these masks, 
uh, to our frontline people. They're saying that they know help is on the way. These are real boxes. I have six or seven boxes here in the car with me that are uh, masks that our nurses and hospital staff could use because this is a very serious issue and we have to take it in a very serious manner. We now have a segment from our recent interaction via ITV Go Skype interview featuring respected South Asian American Dr. Purvi Parikh who joined us from her office in New York City. Her expertise in infectious disease allergy and immunology as well as pediatric allergy and immunology brought in much needed insights and facts and many tips for all our viewers addressing the need of social distancing and lack of personal protective equipment PPE for medical and healthcare professionals. New York State has truly become the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in this country, having the most number of cases and deaths related to the virus, with the statistical model prediction of a peak resource use mid-April on April 15th. Dr. Purvi Parvek reflected on her personal experience on the front line, on the strength visible between emergency rooms, ICUs and wards, and coming together of the entire medical industry to combat COVID-19, showing of truly standing up in, for humanity and serving the ones in need. A very insightful interview with updates and more advice on treatments, PPE and much more. Here is Dr. Purvi Parikh via Skype in New York City. Us ...to another edition of our COVID-19 updates and info. Currently, we have with us Dr. Purvi Parikh joining us from New York City. And we're here located in New York City as well. Let's have her on the show. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Purvi Parikh. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's so nice to have you here. You know, um, you are associated with our family, but also more importantly, your expertise is in infectious diseases and immunology, pediatric allergy and immunology. So you are really on the front line with this coronavirus pandemic right now. My first question to you is, since we are a little tight on time right now, as an allergist, as as somebody whose expertise is this, uh, you know, particular field of uh, viruses as well, uh, your take on having a strict advice for audience and your personal experience through this pandemic so far. So, uh, in terms of advice, what we would like to tell everybody is please stay home. I know it's tempting to go out, but it's actually very, very dangerous right now because not only could you get sick but all of our hospitals are completely full, uh, especially in New York and New Jersey and the tri-state area. There's not enough hospital beds, there's not enough ventilators, um, and I'm already hearing from my colleagues that are in the emergency room ICUs that they don't have space for people. So we're already making decisions to let some people live and some people not live based on that. So please stay home because you're actually helping yourself and helping yes. us by time. For sure. And then, you know, I have to ask you this. It's something that I know you have a lot of expertise in again here, especially in the situation. We are hearing terms such as the emergency room has now become a war zone. You know, uh, doctor, physicians, healthcare workers are really on the front line. Could you perhaps provide a picture of what's happening at these emergency rooms? Why are they being called a war zone? You yourself mm -hmm. posted um, that, you know, this is a time where you've seen truly the medical community come together. Your comments on what's happening. Yeah, so uh, it absolutely is a war zone. Um, I personally am not an emergency room physician, but from all of my colleagues, what they tell me is that patients are coming in nonstop. Just from, thir just from Thursday, um, some of the hospitals in this area have increased their capacity 85%, and that's in less than a week. So, you know, there is a, co a constant onslaught of patients coming in, and, and it's not all mild, you know. These patients are very, very sick. So there's not enough doctors, there's not enough nurses. Um, and then a lot of the doctors and nurses also don't have um, all of the protective equipment they need, all yes. the gear that they need. So um, that those resources are, are thinning out, the amount of hospital beds and sheer space is thinning out. So that's why it's, it's considered a war zone because there's a lot of people coming in. They're very, very sick. Sadly, we're seeing people die on a daily basis. Do you see this um, as an impact? If someone has a lot of breathing issues, it's again a very uh, associated questions with that too. If you have a lot of breathing issues or you are taking medication for it, again, is the advice to just stay home and be secure in your own home? Yes, I absolutely would recommend it completely. You know, stay away from public transportation, away from large crowds. The safest, most controlled environment is your own home. 
So I know we have you for a very short time period here right now, Dr. Purvi Parekh. And again, I really, truly appreciate you for giving this insight. Any uh, current updates or any comments on the medications that are being used? Any vaccinations that you can give us an information on? And of course, I would love for you to give out a message to your fellow medical professionals and healthcare workers that are working on the front line with you. Right. So in terms of uh, medications, you know, nothing is fully proven. This is a brand new virus. So we're learning about it as we're treating it, unfortunately. But we know that some medications are showing hope from what we've seen in Asia and in Italy. So there's trials going on for things like hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, um, for some antivirals as well, just to see what works best. We can't say anything is definitively a cure or definitively will work until we collect this information. Um, the same with vaccines, actually. Um, there's two different uh, studies started already, one by the NIH right. and one by some pharmaceutical companies. So hopefully we'll know soon in the next couple of months that, you know, a safe and effective vaccine exists. Um, and hopefully then that will also help protect everybody, you know. Um, but yeah, the biggest message I have to tell people, because we don't have a foolproof medicine yet, because we don't have a foolproof vaccine yet, the best thing you can do for yourself and for anybody else, again, is to please, you know, stay home, a little bit of a sacrifice for the next few weeks, but yes. you may save your own life or somebody you know. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Puri Farik. Again, I truly appreciate it. And cheers for all of you that are truly working here. And happy belated National Doctors' Day to you. And it's time for another short break. Stay with us on Vision of Asia. Our voice of the community will be right back. Welcome again. This is the Wednesday night edition of Vision of Asia, South Asian News. And I am Aditi Lama. We are filming from our studio here in New York City. This is our special continued Coronavirus Pandemic Report on Vision of Asia. We are dedicated to presenting all the latest updates, key facts and more information on the frontliners that are truly serving the community in this fight against COVID-19. The cases as we speak from our studio in New York City are doubling and the measures are getting stricter to combat the virus and we again urge you all to take Stay, stop, save. Strongly stay at home, stop the spread, save lives. Social distancing has been advised by each and every healthcare professional as the biggest combat against this virus right now. Keep the ERs for the sick patients or the doctor's office for the same. Save yourself by social distancing. Current world count of coronavirus cases currently tops 800,000, with the United States now having the highest number of cases. So, this is a situation which will require us all to come together. So even us, the media team here, ask you to stay home and contain the spread of the virus so that we all can continue to bring you news. With that, we now have Indian American Dr. Binod Sinha, who spoke with ITV Gold, giving more facts and tips from New Jersey. Here is the story. Thank you for uh, coming to my office in Edison to take this interview from the ITV Gold Sudhir Parikh Media. Um, I have been, uh, this is not my speciality, but as a doctor, uh, I have been following this corona, COVID-19, coronavirus disease 2019, since it started and following and trying to under, read and keep current um, and giving advice to some of my friends, my patients, my family. B before we get into that, I just want to tell people about what is this coronavirus yeah. and what is this COVID-19. COVID coronavirus is a class of virus that affects the upper respiratory tract in humans. It is known for many years, SRS coronavirus <coughs> was very well known. Flu also is a part of a coronavirus class. This COVID, coronavirus disease 2019, because it was found in China, in Wuhan, and transferred from the animal to human. This and it has mutated that 
It has become a pande pandemic disease all over the world. We have at present mo more than 550,000 new cases all over the world. More than 140 countries are affected by this. And death rate is about 155,000 people has died. In USA, so far it is more than 90,000 new cases today. So it has crossed China. And it's a big concern, especially some big metro areas are showing uh, spread. It's, this is a very contagious disease. And it spreads from <clears throat> human to human. So we have to learn how to take care of this disease so that we don't spread. And there are some risk age group people who can get affected with this, who can get this disease, and there is some mortality involved, means death rate. People can die from this. As you can see, what's happening in all over the world. RP is a very strong organization. I am the president of New Jersey State RP. And my feeling is we need to get we need to get involved in this and help at local community level because hospital needs us, medical staff, they need medical, medical doctors, they need supplies, P PPE, personal protective equipments. So we to earn our name and respect as a RP doctor we should get involved in the local community as much as possible to help. We, so we know that this is a pandemic. WHO has announced a pandemic disease. CDC has announced pandemic disease. Number of cases are increasing every day. Deaths are happening every day. And New York is, is the number one, number one place. It's a hot spot. The other thing is female to male to female, very interesting. Male are more prone to get this infection than female. We don't know the answer. Children up to 14 age years, they don't get this infection. After that, they could get it infection, but they don't get that sick. They have a mild symptoms. I have mentioned before, Everyone should learn how to protect yourself and your family. Washing hand with soap and water every hour. If you come out of home, don't touch anything. Wash your hand with soap and water. Use san sanitizer. The other important thing, we have to give a, a, a hope that 99%, 98% of the people will be okay with this disease. There's no disease that 100% cure, especially viral. This is a new virus. This is, we don't know. So only one or 2% people will die. And we have to protect the medical staff who is on the front line, who has put in their life and their family to work, they need to be protected by giving proper equipments, PPE. That's the responsibility of the government. If doctors, nurses, technicians, they start getting sick, Today's statistics, about 20% of the frontline staff who is taking care of the disease has, is positive. 
So protecting the front line is very important. We cannot give a false hope. We cannot. That's irresponsible. We have to be truthful. We have, to, we have been educating the public. Most of the people understand it's, it's a combined effort. Person has to be responsible. Self-responsibility and responsibility to the society. And this wraps up our show for the night. Remember to send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations on our show. Email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on Facebook at ITV Gold. Remember, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch many of our popular shows for free. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is Vision of Asia and I am Aditi Lamba. Take care and be well and stay very safe.